Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is in some sense a successor to last week's video where I looked at how Unix won and what might come after Unix in the operating system landscape. The paper I'm looking at today covers a research operating system called Singularity that was built at Microsoft Research in the 2010s. And this really was a clean slate look at what a new modern operating system could look like. What would the design principles underlying it be? All the operating systems we have today were designed back in the 70s and 80s, but the hardware that we run those operating systems on today is drastically different than what existed back then. The Singularity Project tries to answer the question, what would a modern operating system look like if you designed it from scratch with the goals of trustworthiness and dependability? And they explore this design space with three key new features. One is using processes that are isolated by software rather than hardware, using only channels for communication, and verifying the properties of the programs that this OS runs. The first thing to know about Singularity is that it is written in a type-safe language, and that language is an extension of C-sharp called SingSharp. Using a type-safe language right away eliminates a huge class of errors like buffer overruns that were prevalent in operating systems written in C. Now let's look at the first major innovation, which was the idea of a software isolated process. A software isolated process is very much like a process in a conventional operating system like Unix in that it encapsulates all the resources needed to execute a particular program. The difference is that it utilizes software mechanisms rather than hardware mechanisms to achieve isolation between processes. Traditional processes rely on hardware support to isolate memory between processes. A software isolated process instead relies on type and memory safety that comes from the underlying type safe language. The end result is the same, which is that code running in one process cannot access the memory of another process. The second major constraint on processes is that the only way they can share data is by passing messages to each other. They cannot share memory with each other at all. And these messages have to conform to a static contract that is defined ahead of time. And you can see that utilizing software-based techniques for isolation is actually much better in terms of performance than using the underlying hardware isolation mechanisms. The reason is that you don't have to pay the cost of doing very expensive context switches. When you move, for example, from user mode to kernel mode and back when doing a system call, the underlying hardware still has to do a lot of things like flush the TLBs and so on, and that is expensive. You don't have to do any of that when isolation is guaranteed by the type safety of the language. Now let's look at the second main design choice in Singularity, which was to use contract-based channels as the only mechanism for processes to interact with each other. A channel is basically a bi-directional pipe via which two processes can communicate with each other and it is lossless in the sense that your messages will get queued up for the other side to consume. Here's a simple example of the message contract for a network driver. You have various messages that go in or out of this specific driver. And in addition to the message signatures, you also specify allowable state transitions. And this is a really powerful mechanism for ensuring correct usage of this message API. So for example, you start in the state called start, and when you are in that state, you are only allowed to call device info. And when you call device info, you move to the state called IO configure begin. And when you are in that state, you are only allowed to call either 
the register for events method or the set parameters method. This has the huge advantage that the compiler can statically verify that these operation calls are done in the correct order. And this eliminates a huge class of bugs. So for example, you cannot call send on the network driver before you have initialized it properly. And the third key design choice that Singularity made was to explicitly list all of a program's key resources, its capabilities, and its dependencies in a manifest. And every program in Singularity must have a manifest. And the main advantage of listing out all these things explicitly in a manifest is that the system can enforce all these safety properties, some statically and some dynamically at runtime. And now let's look at the operating system kernel itself. The kernel is also written in SingShop, which is a type safe language. Now they do use some unsafe extensions for very low level hardware access and for the garbage collector. But the vast majority of the kernel is written in the type safe part of SingShop. The job of the kernel, of course, is to provide an abstraction over hardware and to manage thread abstractions and thread scheduling, and also to manage the message passing abstractions that processes use to communicate with each other. But more importantly, it is architecturally a microkernel, which means that all device drivers and even things like file systems execute in software isolated processes that are outside the privileged kernel space. This means that your trusted base of what is running in privileged mode within the kernel becomes very small. So that was a quick look at the Singularity Research Operating System, which tries to take a fresh look at how languages and verification techniques can all come together to build a safe and dependable operating system. I'd really encourage you to read the paper if you're interested. It's actually a very approachable paper. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.